I think the first thing I have to do is thank all the panelists and people in the audience who contributed to uh, the conclusions that came out of that session. Let me tell you that really this is how I saw the conclusions and hopefully most of the people will agree with them. Um, it hasn't been a good year for the airline industry. Kurt, you mentioned some good news. We have to thank a handful of airlines, some of their partners for their commitment, because we had some trials that have shown that it works. The technology works, that the model of using drop-in fuels is one that can be relied on. It looks like it's the right thing. There's an interesting range of potential fuels out there. And the certification process that I know a lot of people from the technical side will be concerned about, the process is mapped. We know the way forward. It'll take time, but it seems like it's manageable. The challenges out there really turn on making it happen. And before I get to those challenges, some things that came out pretty, pretty clearly yesterday. And the first one may sound a little esoteric, but we really need standards for sustainability. What do we really mean by it? Because if we go out there and put biofuels in, into those uh, engines, and it turns out they don't really deliver the CO2 benefits you thought you've, you were going to get, we've got a problem. So that's an important part. But I think the real issue that came out yesterday was that the economics of this right now are messy. They're complex. And if you think of all the things out there that could probably shape or reshape whether this can happen and when it can happen, the price of oil is one. How governments treat carbon, whether it's an ETS or put a tax on it. There's another one that comes out too, and that is that Airlines aren't the only potential users of biofuel. There's people with diesel trucks out there in many parts of the world who would very much be pleased to use subsidized diesel fuel, green diesel. So to think you're the only person out there would be wrong. And it's important to understand how the market for this, this commodity, this green diesel, which is close to what you've got with the biofuel, how it's been distorted by mandates and subsidies by governments around the world. And that's going to shape things as well. And finally, the whole question of what does it cost to get that feedstock. Feedstock, we were told, is 80 to 85% of what this biofuel will cost. And clearly, the economics of, of feedstock supply right now are tough, but how will they be shaped by technology, by scale, by yield improvement? Those are all issues that are out there that make the whole economic picture, at this stage, a little fuzzy. So staying with that same model that, that Kurt used about, about the challenges, the real challenge is how do you create a market? And there are two sides to any market, creating a critical mass of supply. And, and clearly there's a need to be out there encouraging a variety of different sources, feedstock production, and we heard all about uh, ideas for jatropha, ideas for algae. There's a, there's a great range of interesting things out there. And that involves, of course, there's still more research to do to drive down the cost to improve the yield and accessibility. But in every market, you've got supply and you've got demand. And clearly, there was a feeling that the airlines, if you want this to happen, have to get out there and start to engage in this process of what really is an infant industry for the airline community. In fact, I go so far as to say it really won't happen unless the airlines get engaged. It's not going to happen by itself. There are other people who will buy the stuff. And which, actually, there was an interesting point that came out, and we heard it from a number of people, and that was to borrow a phrase from our friends in the Nike world, just try it, just do it. And we heard some great examples yesterday of people just getting out there and, and trying things. You won't get it right the first time around. Do it on small scale. Get some success models going. And I think that's a key ingredient in it all. Here's one for the airline community. It won't happen without your real engagement and real involvement. And I think there are a number of things that came out from the discussion yesterday. Number one, building the business case. Part of the business case is the economics of it. And I don't think, at least from the discussion yesterday, you can expect biofuel to be any cheaper than the commercial fossil-based fuel that might be out in the market. The real issue, though, is what is the strategic benefit of biofuel. 
Secondly, I think the, the airline community has to do a little bit more work in drilling down into what is its strategy in this area. How does it want to move the agenda forward? What's the plan? So I think there's some more work that needs to be done in there. At least that's what came out yesterday. And of course, as part of it, we had a communication session earlier this morning, but getting out there and engaging governments all those partners out there who are providing feedstocks, refining capability, middlemen, and also opinion leaders about really what is the agenda on biofuels. Let me come back to governments for the last challenge. Um, there was the notion that if the airlines are going to be getting involved in this biofuel world, you start to get into a messy world of ground transportation, subsidies, you really need to understand what are the policies you want governments to be following. Not only consistent policies within the aviation sector, but consistent policies across sectors that might be looking for access to biofuels. You've heard it before about supporting research. I think that's important, but I think it can go a step further, and that is, can governments actually get involved in promoting, supporting prototype plans to see if it works? This whole notion of just do it they certainly can play a role in helping roll out some of these test models. So Philippe, those are, those are the conclusions as I saw them from our group yesterday. I think the important message is it just won't happen unless the airlines really get engaged in that. Thank you very much.